Well, good morning. We're out here on a beautiful, cool spring morning to check out how soils relate to each other in the landscape in what we call a catena. I like to call this lab getting to know a catena. It sounds like somebody's name, but actually it's a Latin word for chain. And if you think of a, a, a link chain sagging between two hills, each of those links would be a soil. And so here we have this uh, hill with a little valley and a waterway in between. There's a bit of a stream that runs off through the woods. And we'll see that if we understand the landscape, we can predict how soils will change as we go from the summit of the hill where we're standing now, down over the shoulder, into the foot slope, and all the way into the uh, alluvial depository area down uh, which is left in trees. Now you'll often see this in agricultural landscapes that the soils that are most wet and poorly drained in this region will be left in forest because there's just too much trouble to farm. And so that's why we have that little finger of trees. The way we're going to look at the soil is not with a soil pit because we don't want to destroy all these fields and go through all that trouble. What soil scientists do to see what's down there without digging a big pit is they drill a hole or they auger a hole. This, what I have in my hand, is called a soil bucket auger. Uh, a bucket auger is one that has, this part is, is called a bucket and it takes a big chunk of soil out. What it actually does is shaves off a slice of soil that it then sends up into the bucket and then we can pull it up. And so we can get about 10 centimeters or uh, four inches of soil at a time every time we go down and fill up with the bucket. So we're going to do that about 10 centimeters at a time. And when we bring it up, uh, normally if I was just mapping this, I would be just taking a look at it and, and uh, feeling it and making measurements. Uh, but since I want to compare soils, we've got a plastic pipe cut in half to make a trough. And it's marked every 15 centimeters. And so we're going to take our approximately 10 to 15 centimeters of soil and empty it into the trough and sort of lay out a model of the samples as we get them so we'll create recreate the soil in this trough and then we'll be able to take soils from different parts of this landscape and bring them right next to each other for comparison so that's how we're that's how we're going to do this and we're starting off pretty much at the summit of this uh, slope so this should be a well-drained soil uh, we're on sandy coastal plain material a little bit like the soil pit that we saw in the other uh, field trip. Uh, this one doesn't have any gravel because it was, it was never a river, but it was probably a beach. So it's, a, it's very sandy. Think of the sand on the beach. But a little clay has developed over time, and we've got a nice soil profile here. So we're just going to pick a spot pretty randomly. Uh, we're sort of at a field margin here. We don't want to mess up the research fields. And we just uh, put this down and we start turning and those teeth dig in. You have to put a little bit of downward pressure. But the, and as it digs in, it's shaving off that slice of soil that I mentioned and filling the cup. So when the, the bucket down there is about full, it has open sides. This model has open sides, which is really important for a soil that has more clay in it, but that allows you to empty it a little bit easier. So here we have the first sample of soil. And it's down, as you can see, about uh, maybe 12 centimeters deep. And I think you can see some of the features that we saw in the soil pit. The upper part here that's very dark is uh, very high in organic matter because it has been in this grass permanent vegetation now probably for the last 40 or 50 years, I believe. But at one time this was this was in the part of the field that was plowed and so this part is also enriched in organic matter but not as much as up here so it's lighter in color and uh, we always like to look at the bottom because this is where it broke off the body of soil and we can kind of see it undisturbed all right so i'm going to empty this keeping the top side up and try to keep it in in order as much as i can and it's not going to be perfect 
and of course it's difficult to study the structure because the soil is so disturbed but here is here is what would be an A1 horizon this is a new horizon that's forming because of the grass and we're going to set that at zero and we've got this other AP horizon below it which is the relic from when this part of the field was plowed now we're on a farm this is a research farm owned by the University of Maryland and we want to squish this down till it's about the same depth as this hole so it should be like that I think I can probably do better than than that by uh, getting a tape out maybe so we can measure the hole so this is our we actually have two horizons in our first sample then it's pretty clear that this is a separate horizon I don't think any of you would argue with that it's full of roots and it's much higher in organic matter and uh, measure this and indeed it's going down to about 12 and a half 13 centimeters so this is a pretty good model squish it up a little bit then we just go back in we want to usually try to clean it off a little bit so we don't contaminate layers and we'll go in and do it again you only have to turn it a few times go deep enough see I don't know if you can see down into the hole but again I'm just going to the point where the bucket part is filled now the hole is well, I can't put my hand down there it's a little bit too small but it's about uh, 24 centimeters now notice I'm brushing away this top part because some of that soil at the top is soil around the edges that fell in on the way out again I like to look at what's here uh, we don't see major change yet, I don't think. Push this out. Okay, sometimes it helps to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of persuasion there. Uh, I think you can see that this soil is holding together a little bit different. You want to observe this as you get it out. The color hasn't changed much, but it seems to be more dense. This is probably an old plow pan. That is, the soil was plowed, and almost any tillage implement that, that lifts and turns over the soil is likely to create compaction below the depth at which it's tilling. Uh, now this... It sounds like a rock, uh, I'm guessing. Remember that we're on the coastal plain, so there's no native rock for hundreds of meters here. But let's see if we can chip this open. Yes. Uh, I'll take a close look at this. This is pretty typical for this kind of coastal plain sandy sediment. Millions of years ago, when this was down in the ocean and this was and the land was rising the groundwater was moving up and down seasonally and when the uh, groundwater would move up the iron would get reduced so the red the red coloring is iron oxides but when it was wet underground it would get reduced when it got saturated and it would dissolve and move down and that iron would move down to the point where the, it was just aerated and that fluctuating water table would cause it to re-precipitate and, and actually form something that's very much like a rock. It's actually sand grains cemented together with iron oxide. So it's like a kind of sandstone, but it didn't, it's not part of the Earth's, you know, crust. It's not a sedimentary rock. It's actually formed in an ancient soil, but probably not in this soil under these conditions. Uh, one reason why we know that is that it tends to form layers and these layers are not horizontal but they're often at different angles so it probably tumbled down the mountain to get here so there was a, a hill that was a lot bigger here at one time so there is some dense soil probably formed uh, by a, by plowing uh, just think about what happens if the plow is turning the soil over think about what happens if you lift a heavy weight in the gym 
what your feet are doing while you're lifting that weight. So when the plow is lifting the soil, the plow sole is packing down on the soil below it. So it tends to create compaction. It's one of the, the negative aspects of tillage, of which I believe there are many. Okay, we'll go in for another bite of soil. Dark hole down there. That should be enough. I think we can see the color is getting a little lighter here, a little redder. We're probably into an E horizon and probably getting in. If it's got clay in it, it will be a B horizon. And it feels a little sticky. Especially in this lower part. So probably getting into the B horizon. Go. Now it's suddenly got a much easier to turn. So again, you want to be observant. That tells me that we're probably getting into something that's got less clay in it. Yep, much less clay. We're kind of through the B horizon, so this is a fairly sh shallow soil here. And we're into the parent material which should be something like the sandy sediment that this soil formed in. Getting a little redder in color. And I think you can see it's you can hear it. Okay. I think you could could you hear that grinding sound? Mostly sand. It's probably we'll determine that later but probably 90% sand or so. I can hear it now if you listen carefully. Very sort of gritty sounding. We're in a very sandy layer, plus there's some of that ironstone gravel down here. There might be, might be some quartz pebbles, but uh, let's see. Color is getting a little redder. All the way down here, pretty nice bright colors. Yeah, here was a, a quartz pebble. Similar to what we saw in the soil pit, but smaller. And it's rounded. So this is probably evidence of water movement having deposited this material originally, but we're talking a long, long time ago. Down again. Can you hear that? This, this is a good example of why I like to look at the bottom before I empty it because that gives me kind of a clean uh, view before it's been messed up with the patterns of color. You can see some very red material and then some material that's much whiter. This lighter colored material is where the iron is dissolved and washed away. It's depletion, depleted of iron, and the red is where the iron uh, diffused to and then precipitated and that's a concentration of iron and again we're getting some of these rounded so we're in a layer now we've gone through remember this is coastal plain sediment so it was laid down by the by the landscape eroding into the water and so it would be laid down just a few millimeters at a time with a different storm so we're probably in an earlier era geologically in which there was some very fast-flowing water, maybe a river outlet, that brought these gravels here. The color is a bright red. There's a little bit of ironstone here, similar to that other ironstone. I think that's a pretty distinct layer. Uh, and you can hear it and feel it. Uh, it's probably a, 
what we would call a lithologic discontinuity because it's got much more sand and it's got a bunch of gravel in it. So I'm in this sand and gravelly material. Again, lots of nice red colors so we know it's well aerated as the iron turns red when it's got lots of oxygen and lots of gravel. It's well aerated because it's so sandy, full of large pores. And this is, this is real wet, but it's pretty much like beach sand. There's almost no clay in that. Now notice it's, the colors get all mixed together. The white color and the red color gets mixed together when we put it here. That's why we want to observe it before we take it out of the auger. So I think we'll go down maybe one more. And remember, throw away the stuff on top because that's just falling in the hole. And again, we can see now we're probably getting into a zone that is often saturated with groundwater, at least in wet years, and that creates this depletion, these white areas, and you can see pretty sharp delineation between the, the lighter colored areas where the iron has been washed off and the iron accumulations. I don't see any, I don't feel any gravel here, so we've kind of got through that gravel layer that was just one, one layer. This is just really soft sand, just like a beach. So you can see we've got a little soil profile developing there. Very sandy. Now this is a very easy soil to, because it's sandy to auger in. If you do this in a clay soil, it sometimes takes two people to turn the auger. It's much harder to do. We have a very easy one here. Mostly iron depleted sand. I think that's probably as deep as we can go with this particular auger. You can certainly add attachment, attachments to go deeper. I've occasionally done this to look at groundwater and deep soils and it's gone down about uh, eight meters. That makes a really long handle that can be done. Here's the last one. Okay, I think that's about right. And we're pretty close to the right depth here, right? Went down that far. We know the hole is, is about that deep, so maybe I should have spread it out just a little bit more. It's a good idea, which I didn't, uh, didn't bring a yardstick with me, but it's a good idea to put a yardstick down the hole, measure the depth, and lay it out a little bit more precisely than we did, but this is a pretty good approximation you can see the bee horizon is up in here and that's pretty much the parent material all right so that does it for the first hole it's uh, well drained in the upper part and then we see some evidence of probably some some water there uh, if we had the deeper one we might find out why there's water there uh, in all likelihood there's something holding the water up that's creating that saturated zone Okay, but we're finished with this hole, and we're going to go down the hill now. You can see the next one where the yellow bucket is. We're going to walk down and do the same thing down there. But the nice thing is, since we put it in a trough, 
we can carry the soil with us. Okay, see you down at the other hole.